This is the video showing meniscus coma tear repair. We are viewing from the anterolateral portal looking into the lateral compartment of the right knee. The knee is in a figure of four position to improve access in the lateral compartment. The central posterior horn of lateral meniscus is significantly thickened. There is also a defect at the junction of the lateral meniscus body and the posterior horn. This is one feature that can raise suspicion of a flap tear present. The probe is used to lift up posterior horn to inspect the thickened under surface of the posterior horn. The displaced flap can be seen in the meniscal tibia recess. The road edge of the flap suggests there is some chronicity to the lesion. The displaced flap is being reduced back into the knee joint with probe. However, it redisplaces easily. After multiple attempts, the meniscus flap is successfully reduced into the joint. A radial tear at the posterior horn junction of the lateral meniscus is noted. The instability of the flap influences our decision on the meniscus repair technique. We need to place additional stitches from the meniscus to the capsule to protect the radial repair and improve stabilization. Using an all inside meniscus repair device, the first side to side stitch is placed at the most peripheral aspect of tear in the red red zone of the meniscus. This stitch is placed perpendicular to the tear and helps to reduce the tear gap. A horizontal rib stop stitch into the capsule is then placed at the superior surface of posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This helps to prevent the flap from redisplacing into the recess. A second side-to-side -side stitch is placed at the middle of radial tear in the red-white zone of the lateral meniscus. This stitch further helps to reduce the gap across the radial tear. A third side-to-side -side stitch is placed at the central aspect of radial lateral meniscus tear. This helps to re-approximate and close the radial tear gap. A second horizontal rib stop stitch is placed at the inferior surface of posterior horn. This serves to prevent flap redisplacement and to protect the radial tear repair by reducing the tension across the radial repair. We then proceed to place one vertical rib stop stitch configuration at the junction corner of the posterior horn of lateral meniscus. We next place a second vertical rib stop stitch in the posterior horn of lateral meniscus. Both stitches serve to close the gap between the posterior horn and the capsule, preventing flap redisplacement and to protect the radial tear repair. The rib stop stitches should only be placed once there is a minimal gap between the radial repair sites, as in our case. The lateral meniscus radial tear is stable and well contoured after the repair.